All right, welcome to the Keep IT Unit 1 specimen paper for the new syllabus that's examinable from 2022. This is the new syllabus, so I'm going through all of the questions, but this one, this one is a little different because we have the actual specimen answer, so I'm going to go through the paper, answer each question, and then after each question, go through the specimen answers to see how they match up, so you can see how they mark, you can see how the questions are structured, and you may also see that the specimen paper answers may be a little wrong or may not have the same consistency with what is in the syllabus and those are things that we have to face so the reason I'm going through it is to make sure you understand how to answer a question and what the examiners really see when they are trying to correct it so Cape IT Unit 1 this is the specimen paper examinable from 2022 I hope you learned something right Right, a data flow diagram is an right, a data flow diagram is an important software engineering tool. Define the term data flow diagram. A data flow diagram is a diagram that um, tracks how data is collected, processed, stored, and disseminated within a system. Yeah, we'll take that one mark there. Outline one difference between a context level data flow diagram and a level one data flow diagram. Context level has one process and no data stores, while a level one has multiple processes and data stores and data stores. Okay, looks good to me. All right, draw the symbols using DFDs to represent each of the following uh, data flow. What? How much marks for this? Four marks to put an arrow for data flow. A process looks like a rectangle with a half a circle on top of it, or sometimes it is an oval. An external entity is a rectangle, and a data store is a octal line like that. Oh, did just be giving away marks here, yeah, boy? Just be giving away marks. Our payroll system involves our payroll clerk and then the hours works by weekly pay. Right, so let's see if you can underline these things. Payroll clerk is the external entity. They enter the the hours worked which of the pieces of data um, the results in the calculation of the net pay. this results in the calculation of net pay so calculation of net pay is the process the printing of pay slips so calculation of net pay and printing of pay slips that's all one thing the pay slips are given to the employees on the payroll data pieces of data. Pay slips are given to the employees as a piece of data. Pay slips go. Ah boy, my problem in life has popped back up. You see this here? Payroll database updated. Oh, they can't say payroll database updated and then says a context diagram because a context diagram is not supposed to have any data stores. How have we reached this far? It's 2022 and they're still mixing up context diagram with level one diagram. And they literally have questions that make you say, that a context diagram does not have data stores. They, let them, they, they make you see that. But for the sake of the how much marks? Eight marks. Give them what they ask for because I can't, I can't really justify, I can't figure out why, what they really want when it comes to context diagrams and level one diagram. Like they literally made you say it in this question here, what's the difference between their context level diagram? That's one process, no data stores. That's standard. I don't know if they just, you know, when we get to the answers, we'll see. I'm very interested to see what happened there. All right, so the payroll clerk. Payroll clerk enters the hours worked into a process that is going to calculate calculate net pay and pay slips. The net pay, sorry, the pay slips. Pay slips given to the employees and the payroll database is updated with the, I don't know, net pay. Whatever the database is being updated. Payroll clerk gets the hours worked. Calculate net pay. This results in the calculation of pay and printing of pay slips. The pay slip goes to the employees and they give the employee period the tickets updated. Yeah, and they clearly set our context diagram. Clearly. Well, let's see how they, how they navigated this. Alright, so from our perspective, we have defined the term data flow diagram. Graphical representation to show the flow of data through an information system. Yeah, my, my own is a little better. Tracks how data is collected, processed, stored, and disseminated within a system. Yeah, it's a diagram. They wanted to say graph graphical re representation. That's a diagram. Okay, will they take away my card? Outline one difference between a context level data flow diagram and level one. Context level shows one large single process. Little to no detail about internal operations. Does not generally show data stores. You see what I put there? Does not generally show data stores. That's weird. That's weird. Shows data stores only when they are 
owned by external systems. What? What kind of madness is that? I see never shows data stores only when they are owned by external systems. That's concerning. Okay, if you say so. Level 1 describes the, the thing in much detail, shows individual subsystems, shows data stores needed. For number 3, they say does not generally show data stores. And then in the first level, it just shows data stores needed. Yeah, I, not, I, I don't have anything else to say. Can't say anything else. Symbols for the data flow diagram. Right, we have them there. Although our process, yeah, process. They have the process of the oval, so you can put both of them if you want to make sure you're clear. Alright, so they have payroll click, puts in the hours, the payroll system will calculate the pay slips, send the pay slips to employees, updates payroll database. They call it updates to payroll database. Yeah, we will get the 8 marks. Yeah. Just whenever they give you a question and you ask, well, just for the data store, even if it's a context of it, because all right, repetition is one of the control constructs that may be used in developing algorithm. Describe two other control structures that can be used in developing an algorithm. Repetition is one of the control constructs that may be used in developing algorithm. Describe two other control structures that can be used in developing algorithm. Sequence. Sequence is good. Sequence um, lays out the uh, algorithm step by step in a logical fashion. And then there's um, selection, makes a choice, um, on, makes a choice based on the state of a variable. Yeah, yeah sequence and selection. So sequence, selection, and looping, those are the three ways that they have. Examine the algorithm shown below. Sum is equal to zero, count is equal to zero, four x is one, two, x is equal to 20. Let's get out of x and do things like this. It should ask me four x is one to 20. Four x is equal to one, x, two x is equal to 20. I mean, it is a for loop, but if x mod 3 is equal to 0, counter is equal to counter plus 1, sum is equal to sum plus x, x is equal to x plus 1, z is equal to sum divided by counter. So we find any sum of all the numbers that are divisible by 0, zero all the multiples of 3. We find any sum of all the multiples of 3 between 1 and 20. You know, we basically find any average of all the multiples of 3. Okay, explain the function of the algorithm. It will. It finds the sum of all the multiples of 3 then displays the average of those multiples. Okay, I just say it finds me, displays the average of the multiples of 3, but then I'm just not feeling like I'll get 4 marks. Just feeling like they want you to write some more because they want you to write more and we don't know why. But of all the multiples of 3, I should include all the multiples of 3 between 1 and 20. Is it inclusive? Yeah, it's inclusive. Alright, yeah, that's probably the 4 marks that they wanted. Find the sum of all the multiples of 3 between 1 and 20 inclusive, then displays the average of those multiples. Say the output of the algorithm, okay? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. I'm gonna have, have to add up all of that, boy. Okay, addition. 6 and 3 is 9, 9 and 9 is 18, 18 and 12 will be 30, 30 and 15 will be 45, 45 plus 18 is 45, 55, 63, 63 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, are correct, 63 divided by 6 is equal to 20.5, let's do that again. 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9 is 18, 18 and 12 will be 30, 30 and 15 will be 45, 45 plus 18, 63, yeah. 20.5 I guess, and 6 numbers I got, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, yeah. I'm right, I'm right, mm-hmm, and it's x mod 3, so anything is a multiple of 3, anything so, I think so, I'm correct, I'm correct, aren't I, yes I'm correct. Design a flowchart to represent the algorithm, oh, how nice of them, a flowchart for this, would look something like start sum is equal to zero, counter is equal to zero. Or we had to convert it to a while loop in order for the flowchart to work. That's the trick here. X has to be less than 20. Is X less than 20? If the answer is yes, X is less than 20, then you go to the decision, which is is X mod 3 is equal to 0. Answer is yes. Then you go counter is equal to counter plus 1, and then sum is equal to sum plus x and then we have to go 
go back uh, before we reach back up x is equal to x plus one and then we reach up here check to see if x is still less than 20 and then if the answer to our question is no the loop is finished we do the calculation for z is equal to sum divided by counter and then our end product is to print counter print z and all that will stack us do i get it yeah i could really stop it right stop so i put it in the space i find out a little bit of marks for this this um intense algorithm you know this flow chart slightly intense i think it should be a little more five marks alone for that i mean it's not that the flow chart is hard but five marks alone man. i could have given at least a little seven but okay average of those multiples average of those multiples and the amount found i just realized they print they printed the counter too so if they printed the counter then you'll probably want to do that mm -hmm. Okay, what said them? Sequence selection. Oh, they have recursive too. Wow, they're real wicked. Recursive is not. Ah, yeah, that's not done. That's new. I don't think that's new. IT syllabus. Recursive. Recursion is more like computer science, but good for them. Good for them. The algorithm returns the average of all the multiples of 3 between 0 and 20 and prints the result. Did he even put the point where they pr it print any counter? Because it is print any counter. Yeah. yeah, so we got those four marks there. The output of the algorithm is 63. No, the output of the algorithm is not 63. Z is sum divided by counter. Ah, CXC, CXC, CXC. Yeah, that's a, that's an error. The output is sum divided by counter, which is 63 divided by 6. So the output is Z. So it will print 6, and then it will print... 20.5 but we didn't put the six so that's pretty six so it'll say six and then 20.5 wouldn't say 63 definitely wouldn't say 63 yeah all right so we have the sum and counter set to zero they had the x is equal to x plus one why did you put the x is equal to x plus one there? oh they have four x is equal to one to 20 so the counter started up at zero it wouldn't matter though yeah they have as x equal to 20 all right if x is not equal to 20 then you check the mod yes counter yeah all right so that's good print count print z yeah five marks wow correct symbols decision boxes two marks correct counters variables one mark looping one mark print count and z one mark five marks okay yeah all right so no issues there the flowchart was straightforward right so of course thanks for watching you made it to the end if you're looking for cape it classes that you want me to teach you could check us out at education.makeitsimplett.com and you will see all the different packages that we have for cape it classes and of course you could always come back to this youtube channel and there'll always be free videos here to explain different things to you but if you want dedicated classes that will explain certain things to you and make sure you understand the syllabus inside out then check us out education.makeitsimplett.com you'll see cape it and we have a various um set of classes from crash courses all the way down to full-on classes with assignments and ia assistance and paper 3 assistance. So you can check that out, um, make it simple, tt.com.